so I wanted to wait a little bit before I made any sort of follow-up video to this situation because it was such a fluid uh, situation. There was so much going on, so much talk going on about different things possibly happening in the days leading up to different things that I wanted to give a little bit of time for, I guess, more events to play out before I actually spoke on the subject. But keep in mind that I fully expected for this to be the result of this entire thing, for us to be in the same situation that we're in right now. About a week or so ago, I started covering this whole subject of the stimulus checks and the U.S. government kind of, you know, failing in their efforts, or I should say their lack of effort, to actually assist the American public when they need it the most. Obviously, we've been living through a global crisis now for pretty much a year. The economy has not fully recovered, even though the stock markets are doing very good. That is not a full indicator of how the economy is doing. Let me tell you that as someone who trades stocks on a daily basis, that does not indicate whatsoever how the economy is doing. You can use it as one indicator, but it does not indicate the full severity of a situation. There are so many different things that you need to actually bring into the equation, and when you do, it shows that the economy has recovered significantly, but it's not back to where it was and we might not really be back on the correct track for a long time. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Millions upon millions of Americans are still out of work. They're still relying on government benefits that, for the most part, have either degraded entirely or are at their basic brink, you know, of collapse. While the billionaires in this country have gotten nothing but richer ever since this entire thing goes on. And I hate to be that guy who blames the billionaires because, in all reality, when you think about it, why would the billionaires not take advantage of the system that's been built in order to make their lives better? Why would billionaires not, you know, funnel lobbying money into government? Why would they not try and influence uh, the elections and things like that and get people in office that are going to be yes men to them? Why would they not? From a purely business standpoint, that is what they're going to do 100% of the time. I mean, morality wise, of course, we can argue that that's wrong, but I think when it comes to the United States, morality has been thrown out the window a long time ago because if morality was really an issue, we would not be arguing whether or not families that are starving to death, that can't pay their bills, that can't pay rent or mortgages, that are having trouble keeping their fucking lives together, we would not be arguing whether or not they deserve some of their money back, keep in mind. Because I keep seeing this argument go on that, oh, you know, the government, you, you're not obligated to that money. First and foremost, as a taxpayer in this country, that is my money. Okay? That is not the government's money. They are, they, it is not their pocket change, okay? They get that from us. So in a time of need, absolutely that money should be ours. And when we're in a time of need like this and you see such critical failure of the government to even provide the basic necessities that people need to live, you come to realize a lot, okay? So Mitch McConnell has been, I guess, uh, the ringleader of the most recent events that have kind of broke down in this entire subject here. So... Mitch McConnell has basically been the last man really standing in between the possibility of this stimulus vote. The House pretty much overwhelmingly passed the $2,000 stimulus mark. They, they want this to go through. Mitch McConnell has stood in between a vote for it to actually make it pass through the Senate. He claims that there is, quote, no realistic path for this bill to pass, for this measure to pass. And he wants for a few other demands to be met as well before there's even a vote, which include hearing the president out on his claims of election fraud merely 20 days before the full-on transition of power happens in this country. And by the way, the transition of power in this country has already started, if you didn't know, along with a few other things that in all reality have nothing to do with this. Now, keep in mind that this was kind of segued off into a point where they're trying to get this increase done as a standalone option. They want this done just on its own. They want this money to go out to people on its own. That's the idea right now. But Mitch McConnell is willingly now using the American people as pawns in a political game. And in reality, it's been the entire U.S. government for months now, okay? While they've been arguing this entire thing from people on both sides, they've stood around with their hands on their dicks doing nothing in order to stretch out these political arguments that really are based on which side you're on and which lobbyist is funding your pocket, right? So you see things like that and you wonder why people in America get so upset, why Americans are, are becoming so, uh, people are liking to say, you know, Americans are becoming radicalized left and right when it comes to anti-government things and stuff like that. Can you fucking blame them? Can you, uh, you, can you understand it now? Of course people are going to hate the government. 
when in a moment of need, they do absolutely nothing to help them. And I don't care what anyone says. That is the core function of government. The core function of government is to serve the people. They're not there for their own basic interest, even though that's in reality what they are there for. That's what they are there for. They don't care about you and me or your family or anyone like that. And they're failing to even do that. So I want to play a really quick clip here uh, uh, from Mitch McConnell, a.k.a. Bitch McConnell, the turtle himself, and let you guys hear it for yourselves, uh, his logic on why this $2,000 stimulus check vote cannot go through. Experts from across the political spectrum agree that our colleague from Vermont is dead wrong on this. Socialism for rich people is a terrible way to help the American families that are actually struggling. So let me say that again. Borrowing from our grandkids to do socialism for rich people is a terrible way to get help to families who actually need it. Okay, so notice the buzzword there, socialism. In the United States, uh, pretty much any time that the government is supposed to provide like a critical function to the people, you'll have people who claim that it's socialism, okay? Passing stimulus relief so people can survive a pandemic is not fucking socialism. It's called basic human decency and a core function of government. And I love that. Oh, borrowing from our grandkids to do socialism for, for, for rich people is a terrible way to get help to people. Okay. First and foremost, the U.S. government has never cared about borrowing from our future generations. They've done this for decades now to fuel the military-industrial complex by subsidizing several companies to build ridiculous amounts of war machines that we don't even use or realistically need on the taxpayer's dollar, okay? So those billion-dollar companies can be subsidized by the American people to build war machines so we can kill people for oil money, and we're using that by borrowing from our grandkids and debting our country even further, you know, counting that debt counter, that thing's just fucking spinning along, right? That's okay. That kind of quote-unquote socialism's fine. When your billion-dollar buddies on Wall Street had their ass in a ringer back in 2009, and the banks, and all the people in the, finance, the financial institutions, and the people who actually literally caused the recession itself, when they were all bailed out when I was a child, okay? And these billionaires were given, you know, just r extraordinary amounts of money that you'll never see in your lifetime, most likely. When they were given that kind of money for one little break, that was okay. That was fine. We can do that. We can give all these people money. We can give the people who are fucking up the country money. And even in this situation, Mitch McConnell had no issue with a $560 million tax break to Sheldon Adelson, who is worth $34.3 billion. Imagine what that could have done for the American people. That $560 million. And, and, and that's just one billionaire who got bailed out by the government. Imagine what this money that we're, we're fucking throwing away on a daily basis could do if given to the American people. And I agree, honestly, with both sides when it comes down to this, okay? Because a lot of Republicans are making the case, oh, you know, we're spending money on all these foreign programs and shit that we shouldn't be dumping money into. That's one of their concerns or whatever. I agree, we should not be giving foreign countries financial aid in a time where Americans are starving to death. Until our people are taken care of, we should not be funneling billions of dollars into gender study programs in Pakistan and into the, the federal governments of like Sudan and Israel. Let them deal with their situations, okay? Their governments are responsible for them. We are not responsible for them. And I think that's another big, huge issue of America is we too, we, we too often will play the police or, or, or the Papa Bear role. The amount of money we spend on unwinnable wars and stupid shit is insurmountable compared to what it would cost to feed American families throughout this crisis. I pulled up a list of wasteful government spending. Okay, this is according to blog.cheapism.com. It links uh, some other sources and whatnot in the article here. This article was written in 2018, uh, early 2019, so on F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, which is a program that the Pentagon started, which is now about 20 years into development or so, okay? Uh, in 2018, it was seven years behind schedule. It was $173 billion over budget. It was the most expensive weapon system in history. It had an estimated lifetime maintenance cost of $1 trillion. In 2018, they allocated $2.7 billion to make 20 F-35s. 20 F-35s. And then they spent a further $842 million to update the aircrafts that they were supposed to be replacing in the first place. In 2012, Army Chief of Staff General Raymond Odernio told Congress that the nation had more than enough tanks 
to the fact that 2,000 were sitting unused in a California desert. Congress has now earmarked, at this point, more than $1.5 billion worth of taxpayer funds for the M1 Abrams tank program since 1994, and just in 2018, 593 million of that was allocated. So we literally have more tanks than we know what to do with. We have a fucking Atari ET stash in the desert of tanks. We're not selling them to foreign governments or anything, making profit, nothing like that. They're sitting unused. They're literally collecting dust in the sand out in the desert. From 2016 to 2018, the Air Force spent more than $325,000 on 391 self-reheating fragile coffee mugs. Each newly broken mug had an average cost of $836 per mug, and then the Air Force later found out they could 3D print a suitable replacement part at a cost of 50 cents per piece. In 2015, two students from the University of Washington received $1.3 million in federal government taxpayer money to study how foam koozies keep beer cold in hot weather. So go ahead and tell me that the United States can't afford to feed people. Tell me that the United States can't afford to keep people surviving through a global fucking crisis. I'm not sure uh, what the outcome of this will be. Hopefully something will be done and this will pass. Would I be surprised if this is another multi-week, multi-month thing? Absolutely not. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at Subtoptimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus Well, knowing the government fucking failed us, and signing out.